In this video, I'll show you how to trade on Coinbase Advanced, and I'm assuming you have a Coinbase account already. If you don't, then I'll leave a video guide in the description that goes through how to get set up. But once you have your Coinbase account uh, set up, we can go to Advanced via the toggle in the bottom left of the web app. So if I click back to normal Coinbase, that's this one, and then we click Advanced, we go through to the trading screen. Now, I highly recommend trading crypto on Advanced because the trading fees are cheaper. You'll get a better price. Even if you pay for Coinbase One, which gives you free trading fees, on the other side, they still include a spread in the price. So you'll be getting a worse price for your trades over there. So I highly recommend doing your trades on Coinbase Advanced. You'll overall be getting a better trade. Now, all of your assets and fiat currencies are the same between the two platforms. So up in the top right, if you click Manage Funds, you'll see everything here, assuming you know how to deposit cash and everything else. So we won't go through that. But you can go to your portfolio here and you can see all of your details. That's the same between Coinbase and Coinbase Advanced. Uh, so you can see what you want to trade here. You can also check out the fees uh, that you may be charged. So that's going to depend on your trading volume. So as you can see down here, the trading fees start at 60 basis points to 1.2%. That's not exactly great, right? Th these are high trading fees, to be honest. Now you may be able to get lower fees if you're paying for uh, Coinbase One, which is the subscription. If you trade higher volumes, that starts to come down. Now you may ask, why is there two trading fees here? 60 basis points to 1.2%. You get charged a different fee depending on how you interact with the order book. So if we go to spot here, there are fees known as maker and taker fees. I'll explain that in a second, but you want to make sure that you are trading maker orders where you get the lower trading fees. So 60 basis points to start. 1.2% is way too much to be paying. Uh, so we want to make sure we don't pay that for our uh, trading fees. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in a second. Firstly, though, I'll just show you an overview of the trading platform and how we can navigate this. So the first thing you want to do is choose the trading pair that you want to go ahead and trade. That's in the top left hand corner. So you can click this and then this drop down lets you choose whichever trading pair that you want to go ahead and trade. So if we press spot here, you can see there are certain assets and they're um, usually listed by the trading volume. So we've got Bitcoin and ETH, Solana, XRP, as you can see here, and we need to choose a trading pair. So I don't have any USDC. So what I'm going to do is go and search for pound sterling pairs. And you can see that right here. So if I click ETH GBP, that's going to go over and show me uh, ETH valued in pounds. So obviously, if I have pounds, I can swap that for ETH. And if I have ETH, I can swap that back into pounds using this trading pair. You can see buy and sell on the right hand side. So we can trade that pair on either side. Uh, we can choose Bitcoin against various assets as well. So you want to choose whichever fiat currency that you have. If you want to swap it into a crypto, you can do that. You can also sell out of your crypto into any fiat currency that you want. You can also see that stable coins are supported. So we've got USDC here and USDT is also supported as a trading pair if you want to trade that. Coinbase really heavily leans on USDC as a stable coin. Uh, so you may want to use that if you're using Coinbase or you can use any fiat currencies that are supported. Now, if you want to trade between pairs, so crypto pairs, then what we can do is find this uh, ETH BTC right here. So let's say that you have some ETH and you want to swap it into Bitcoin. Well, you can just choose that pair and that will let you swap ETH directly into Bitcoin. If you find that you can trade a pair directly, then you can choose the pair directly. That prevents you selling ETH to USDC, then USDC to Bitcoin. You can just trade directly. Large pairs have direct uh, trading pairs. If you're trading something smaller, you'll find it probably doesn't have a direct pair uh, with many other currencies. So you'll have to just find the easiest way for you to trade between one crypto asset and another. Uh, but you can go and search for anything that you want to trade here. So I'm going to be trading Bitcoin against pound sterling, and then we can buy and sell. Uh, on the right hand side here. Now this is the exchange rate between the two assets. This is just a chart of that. What we want to do is choose the uh, time horizon that we're looking at. Usually one day or one week you'll be looking at when you trade. So this is a daily chart, meaning that these candlesticks represent one day's price action of the exchange rate between the two assets. So Bitcoin and pound sterling. You can see here that during this day, it's a green candle. So the uh, exchange rate opened at this price and then it ended up here, a green candle showing that the price has risen. This is a red candle. So on this day, the price opened here and finished all the way down here. This wick here shows you intraday trading. So because it's a red candle, we know that it closed down on the day. That's the exchange rate of Bitcoin against pounds. So Bitcoin fell valued in pounds. It started here. It came all the way down here intraday and then it finished here. So the body is where you open and close and the wick is intraday trading. So you can just see the exchange rate over time. 
uh, of the exchange of the uh, asset pair that you want to trade. Now, on the order book right here on the right hand side, this is showing everyone's orders and how they're trading. So down here we have buyers who are showing their bids to the market. They're showing how much Bitcoin that they want to buy, and they're showing us the price that they're willing to pay. And we can join this order book as well on the right hand side when we enter our orders. Up at the top, these are sellers and they're showing how much Bitcoin they have on offer uh, that they want to sell and the price that they're willing to trade at. Of course, uh, sellers get more expensive as they go up, uh, buyers get cheaper as they go down. And then in the middle is where you know, a buyer and a seller actually meet with the price that they're willing to exchange at and then they go ahead and trade. And that will be on the right hand side here. You can see a list of all of the trades, the price and the size that was traded. And then on the right hand side, we can enter our orders and join the book as well. In order to trade on Coinbase Advanced, we just have to give instructions to the system about how much we want to buy and the prices that we're willing to trade at. And so the first uh, type of order that we can put in is a market order. So up here, you can see the assets that I've got. It's going to show me the balances that I have. And then you can be a buyer or a seller. So let's be a buyer for the time being. And then the order type here, firstly, we're going to choose a market order. So click that. Now, this lets you choose the amount that you trade, uh, but not the price. So on the amount tab right here, you can click Bitcoin, as you can see, or you can switch over to the other side of the trading pair, which for me is pounds, but you may have dollars or euros or anything else. So let's say that I want to buy an amount of pounds. Um, all I'm telling the system now is I'm willing to spend five pounds to buy Bitcoin or five dollars or five euros. I don't choose the price that I'm going to pay now. What I'm going to do is when I press buy BTC, it is going to immediately go over to the order book, which is right here, and it's going to find the cheapest seller of Bitcoin at the time that I press the button, which is this one right here. It's this price. It's the lowest offer or the best offer, right? The guy who's willing to sell the cheapest. That's the order that I'm going to lift off the order book when I press a market order to buy Bitcoin. So I'm spending the other side of the pair, which for me is pounds, and I'm going to buy Bitcoin and I'm just going to take it off the cheapest seller. That is known as a taker order. It's a taker order because we are taking their order off the book. They've already shown their order to us on the order book and we're taking their order away from the book. You pay higher trading fees for that, known as taker orders. And so you pay 1.2% according to the fees that we just looked at. That's quite high. So I recommend not using market orders because you're just giving fees away. Uh, but if you want to get an order done quickly, just press buy here, whatever crypto that you want to buy, and it will take the best offer off the book at the time that you press the button and you will immediately trade. You also can't exactly choose the price that you pay because as you can see, the price moves around a lot. So when you press the buy button, you don't know exactly how much Bitcoin that you're going to get because the price may change, but it's going to get the order done very quickly. So you can see that the total here and the fee involved, and that will be the, uh, the total that you actually spend is the amount that you put in here. So if you say that I want to spend $100, that's going to be uh, the net payment that you make, but some fees are going to be taken out of that. And so the net balance is minus fees. That's how much crypto that you're going to get. The next order type that we can use is a limit order. And I recommend using limit orders because Firstly, you get much cheaper fees. I mean, the fees are cut in half, uh, certainly on the first tier. So you're only paying 60 basis points now. And with a limit order, we can choose the price that we pay as well. So in order type, we're going to change this to limit order. And now you can see that there is another box where we have to input the limit price that we're willing to pay. So with a market order, you just choose the amount that you spend. With a limit order, you choose the amount that you trade and the maximum price that you're willing to pay on the buy side. Or if you're selling, that will be the, you know, the least you're willing to take, right? So this limit price is essentially an instruction to say, trade immediately as long as the price is at or better than my limit. That's giving the system a limit where it says, look, if you get a worse trade than my limit, don't trade. And if you get my limit or better, you can go ahead and trade. So what we're going to do is press a limit order. Now you can see for my trading pair that this is just auto populated, uh, but you can click on the order book and you can see that the limit price changes on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is put a limit order in like this. Now four pounds, you can see that the current price is around uh, 78,000 pounds per one BTC. We can of course trade a fraction of any Bitcoin, right? So we're going to spend much less than that. But what we're going to do is put that limit order in and we're going to tell the system that I'm willing to buy Bitcoin but I'm only willing to pay 70,000 pounds per one unit. 
and it's going to work out the fraction that we can buy. And then we can put an amount in here, whatever that may be. Uh, and then you can go ahead and buy. You can see the fees here. So what I'm going to do is put this order in and I'm going to press buy BTC. And you can now see that that order is right here. Now, I've not traded yet because my limit price is 70,000 per one unit. The price in the market now is 78,000 per one unit. So what I've done is I've given this instruction to the system that I'm willing to trade immediately as long as the price is 70,000 or better, but it isn't. And so it hasn't traded yet. This order is known as working because the instruction is still in the system and it will stay there until I cancel it or until it trades. So if the market price now falls, where there's a seller willing to trade with me at 70,000, I will trade with them and the order will execute and I'll pay my trading fees. If we don't execute the order and it doesn't trade, no trading fees are paid because we haven't exchanged assets. So this limit price is important to put a, you know, a limit on what you want to trade at. The other important thing here is that because we are putting a limit order onto the order book, we're actually showing our order to other people and we are making liquidity onto the order book, right? We are showing our order first before it can trade. And that's when we get those cheaper maker trading fees. So we're paying 60 basis points here instead of 1.2%. So you can definitely use limit orders to reduce your fees, but you have to make sure that your limit price can't trade immediately, right? That means that you have to look at the price here and you have to put your limit order, if you're buying, slightly below the current price so that your order can go on the book and then get traded after. If you're a seller, then you'd put your limit a little bit above the price and get traded after, hopefully. You can see that the price moves around a lot. So if you put your limit price quite close to the uh, actual price that's being traded, you should get your order done pretty quickly. Now, what you can also do to make sure that your order goes onto the book first and doesn't trade as a taker order is use this toggle uh, right here. So what I'm going to do is cancel this order first. So what we can do uh, on the right hand side, I think, is just cancel this. Uh, so you can see that we're going to cancel order. We don't pay any trading fees here, so that's canceled. And then what we're going to do is make sure that our order goes in um, as a maker order. So what we can do is click this where it says execution and it says allow taker. We don't want that because we don't want to pay those higher fees and we don't want to trade immediately. So we're going to choose post only. And what this does is prevents us putting our order onto the book that can trade immediately and take someone else's order. That prevents us putting in taker orders and it prevents us paying those higher fees. So let's say that I'm going to choose now uh, a price of, let's say 78,000. And my order, because the price is moving, my order may get taken immediately, right? I may trade immediately. And so if it can trade immediately and pay those higher fees and take someone else's order, because I've put post only on right here, if it can trade immediately, it will actually get canceled out and say, you told me that if you could trade immediately, cancel the order. That prevents you putting in maker orders and it prevents you paying higher fees. You can put post only here and then you can put in a, a, an amount. If you press buy and you can trade immediately, it'll actually cancel out. Uh, so that prevents you from you know, paying higher fees, which is a good thing. If you're uh, okay with that, you can press buy BTC. If your order can go on the book, it's just gonna go in as an order and wait to be traded just as the other order was. There is another order type on Coinbase Advance known as a stop limit order. So I'll show you how that works. Go to order type, drop down here and then stop limit. Now a market order is trade immediately. A limit order is trade immediately as long as the price is at or better than my limit. And with a stop order, the instruction is only enter a limit order at a certain trigger price. And we can put that trigger price in. This lets you trade in a couple of different ways. So let's say that I've got some Bitcoin and this is the price right now. And I'm willing to take profits in my trade. And I bought in at a lower price and I'm willing to sell out now at a profit. So that's fine. But you know, I'm not desperate to get my trade done. And so if the price does bounce, then that's fine by me and I can sell at a higher price. But I want to make sure that I take my profits it, at least at this price here, right? So you're willing to not sell here if, in case the price goes higher. But if the price comes down here, then you want to sell out and lock in your profit. That's when we can use a stop limit order. Now we can't use a market order because if we use a market order, we'll sell right now. So we don't want to do that. We also can't use a limit order 
Because if we tell the uh, system, sell immediately right now, as long as the price is 73,000 or better, it's gonna sell immediately because the price is 78,000. We can't do that either. That's where we use a stop limit. And the stop limit tells the system, only trade at this price. So if we're here, we don't trade. If we're here, we don't trade, right? That means that we can let the price rise. But if the price does drop down to this exact price, then you can enter my order for me. Now, we would actually be a seller in this instance, right? Because if we've got Bitcoin here and we wanna sell at a lower price, then that means we have the Bitcoin to actually go ahead and sell. So let's put sell, stop limit, and the price here is, let's say 73,000. So we can put that stop price in. That is a uh, an instruction to the system that says, at 73,000, enter a sell order with a limit price. What limit price you want to trade at is up to you, but for the most part, you'd have the same as the stop or the trigger price. So 73,000, but you can put that in as anything that you want. So for example, if my stop price is 73,000, and then I put a limit price at 80, 80,000. My instruction to the system is at 73,000, when the price gets there, enter a limit order to sell Bitcoin at 80,000. Now I actually wouldn't sell any Bitcoin there. My, my limit order would go into the, the system, but my price would be 80,000. So I wouldn't actually sell anything because the price would be 73 for that order to trigger. So you can do that, not very useful probably, but you can do that if you want. Or you can put a limit price anything you want. I can put it in as like 50,000. And what would happen here is that at, 70, uh, at 73,000, the, the order would go in, the limit price would be 50, presumably the price would be at 73 or very close. And so I'd actually trade immediately, right? Because my limit is 50,000, so it would trade, it's better than that, so it trade immediately. For the most part, you're probably gonna put this in at exactly the same as the stop price, but it's up to you. So this lets us trade at a lower price than the current market price as a sell order. Uh, and you may wanna do that to just protect profits, right? Or even if you've bought in at a higher price and you want to protect a loss, right? So you're willing to you know, lose 20% on your trade, but if you get to 25%, you just wanna sell out and, and get out of it. You can do that as a stop loss as well, it's known as, which is where you're actually selling at a loss to prevent further losses if the price goes way below that. So you can either sell at a lower price to take a loss or to lock in some profits with a stop limit. Stop limits are usually used to sell an asset that we already have. So for example, if I have the asset and it's trading at 78 and I want to sell at 100, then I'll just use a limit order in that case because I'm not gonna trade until the price gets to 100. Now, if I want to buy at a lower price, I can simply use a limit order as well because I'm not gonna trade until the price gets to that price, so I can just use a limit order. I can also use a stop limit to buy at a higher price Right, because let's say I wanna buy at 90 when the price is 78, then I would need to use a stop limit order then because otherwise I'd trade immediately. But why would you want to buy at a higher price? Um, you know, Maybe you're trading a breakout and so you can actually say, I don't wanna trade until we're breaking out. M maybe you can use that as well. Um, so that's up to you. But for the most part, stop limits are used to actually sell an asset that you already have at a price that's lower than it's currently trading. There is also the option to trade TWAP orders and TWAP stands for Time Weighted Average Price. This is usually used for larger orders where you just want to trade throughout a period in time, let's say the day. So rather than, let's say you've got you know $50,000 to trade, you don't wanna trade it all at once. You just want to give the system instruction to say, work this $50,000 over 24 hours. And so my price is time weighted. Right? It's weighted by the average price traded throughout that time. And that just helps you slowly work an order and get a decent average price compared to what was traded during that day. So if we choose uh, TWAP right here, we can choose the maximum limit price that we're willing to trade at. So let's say I'm a buyer now, and the price of Bitcoin is 78,300. So let's say that um, 78,500 is the maximum that I want to pay. Uh, so it won't trade higher than that. And I can put an amount in that I want to buy, whatever that may be. And then you can start at any time that you want. So you can start in five minutes, you can start in 12 hours, you can start now. And the duration of the TWAP, let's say that I want to trade over 10 hours. So I'm going to work whatever amount that I want to buy over a 10 hour period. And the price that I get is time weighted by the average price traded throughout that time. I'll leave my beginner's guide for Coinbase down in the description and some deposit and trading bonuses on the exchanges that I use. Uh, they'll be down in the description as well. I'm James, it's MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.